Hello and welcome everybody once again to my channel. It's great to have you here again. I hope you are all doing very well and staying healthy. This is Rick Serrano saying hello from Luxembourg and the topic is once again the picky picky cherry picking theory that as you know we relaunched two weeks ago. The theory has been revisited uh, because of two factors. The first is that I have received input from more than 140 viewers, so thank you very much to all of those of you who provided me with your input. And also the theory has been revisited because it was recently presented at the Harvard Business School by two brilliant students there down in Boston and they collected some very uh, insightful points uh, that I have now incorporated into the theory. So, you know, since I relaunched the Piggy Piggy Cherry Picking Theory two weeks ago, I have been receiving questions and comments and I said to myself, why don't we organize a Q&A session? So, from the questions that I have received, I have made a selection of the 10 most important questions and in this video I will go through them one by one, trying to give uh, the best possible answer. Uh, let me tell you that if you have not yet watched the video of the picky picky cherry picking theory my advice would be that you stop this video now and you go and check out the uh, full video of the picky picky cherry picking theory here in the channel you will find it very easily with the same cover like you are seeing now except that it doesn't have of course the q a yellow rectangle that you're seeing right now on the screen so if you go and check that video and you come back to the Q&A, that would probably make more sense. If you know the theory by now, because it has been around since 2017, so you probably know it by, by now, then I invite you to listen to the, the 10 questions that uh, people have asked me or the, the most uh, uh, recurring questions and let me give you my answers. Now, let me start by reminding everybody that the theory is built up by 10 cherries uh, and these 10 cherries constitute the strategy that I invite you to follow with the objective of making sure that you find a fantastic love partner. So this is about love, you know, the, the picky picky cherry picking theory is about finding you a fantastic love partner and making sure that that relationship lasts forever uh, plentiful of happiness and uh, great moments. Now um, in the theory I walk you through 10 concrete pieces of advice uh, as you know I call them the cherries and uh, these are the cherries here serenity, doubt, values, long-term life project, the rule of 15 plus, Jack Welch's question, ideal, your airplane, time as your main asset, and the casting process. So those are the 10 cherries that you need to know very well uh, to find that love of your life. And the, the cherries, let me remind you that they are grouped into two subsets. So the first set of cherries is designed to increase your self-awareness and to help you define what kind of love partner you want and you need. Whereas the second set of cherries invite you to take action, so to move and take concrete steps into finding your ideal love partner. Now, having made this quick summary, let's move now to the Q&A session. So, the first question I am receiving is, I have the feeling your theory is a bit too strict, too rigid. Can you comment on this, Rick? Well, of course, let me comment on this. I believe that the theory is indeed very flexible in the important points. And yes, I believe it is very rigid in also other critical points. And let me explain you this. Uh, the theory is very flexible in the selection process. That means in cherry number 10, for example, no? Uh, which is the casting process. So there, for example, I invite you to give a chance to anyone you like. In the casting process, I invite you to be very open, to take risks, to meet as many potential candidates as possible, to be open, to try, to experiment. So in that sense, I believe the theory is very flexible. Now, 
The theory, on the other hand, is very rigid on some other aspects, like, for example, cherry number nine. I don't want you to waste time, that, and that's a rigid. If a candidate, for example, is not performing, move on quickly, waste no time. Also, for example, in cherry number six or cherry number eight, please don't waste time wishful thinking that the wrong person will change. They will not. And also, don't accept uh, trash in your relationship from previous passengers. You know, you are and you deserve a fully clean airplane before you go on board. And I also ask you that you offer your uh, future partner, you offer a clean aircraft to your next passenger. So in this respect, yeah, the theory is definitely strict and I, and I, I recommend that you are strict with yourself for these matters. But oh, it's also flexible, if I, as I have also explained. So this is question number one. Let's let's move to the second question. So uh, they are asking me: Is the theory valid regardless of age? I mean, dating is not the same at every age, is it? Um, yes, it is. You know, the theory is valid uh, regardless of age. Yes. Whether you are 18 or 55, you should aim at finding the right love partner. That's my belief, you know. Whether you are a 45-year-old single mom or a handsome 32-year-old successful single, you should be very picky. I want you to be very, very picky, picky. You know, regardless of age, I consider that you are worth a lot. So you should aim very high. Uh, you should not accept crap, you should fight for the best. And I want you really to fight for your dreams, you deserve it. You know, this is my philosophy and this is how my coaching is structured. We should all aim at living an extraordinary life, yes, regardless of age, regardless of your condition. Please follow this advice. So that's question number two. Let's take a look. Third question. How much time will it take me to find the right partner if I follow your theory step by step? Well, folks, it's impossible to predict this, of course, but there is one thing that I can assure you. It will be significantly faster to find the right love partner, and I underline the right love partner, if you use the principles of the cherries that uh, if you don't. Moreover, you know, not only will it be faster, it will be more effective. Uh, observe that the focus here is not so much on the time that it will take you. The focus here is on the quality of the love partner that you will be able to find. And also, in the end, the total time you will need will be significantly reduced. Let's remember that specifically cherry number nine asks you to avoid wasting time. Let's remember cherry number 10 asks you to be quick and efficient in your talent search. So, you know, in the end, you will save a lot of time, but, 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 it will also save you unnecessary suffering. You know, some relationships are really uh, full of suffering and I don't want you to suffer. So, if you do apply the theory, I guarantee you, your suffering will be significantly reduced. Question number four. Uh, Rick, some good couples do fail after many years of happiness. How do you explain this with your theory? Well, this is an excellent question, I have to say. Uh, you know, effectively, yeah, you're right. Some good couples do fail despite all. After years of happiness. Well, or so it seems, so it seems. Let me, let me answer the question by pointing to three little things. First of all, are you totally sure that that couple, that they were really, truly happy all those years? Are you really sure? Because maybe they were sandbagging problems for many years, only you had not seen those problems before. Second, Maybe, you know, maybe that same couple would have never got married or never got together if they had applied the picky picky cherry picking theory. You cannot know. Third, well, of course, a good couple can indeed fail. However, the point here is that if you apply the theory, 
you would be significantly reducing the, ch the chances of failure because you are being so careful in the selection process and you are being so honest with yourself that you significantly reduce the chances of failure. So let's move on to the fifth question, diversity. So does your theory work for gay couples? Well, absolutely yes. And I wonder why not? I mean, whoever asked this question, thank you, but why not? We all deserve a great love partner. We all deserve to dream big. We all deserve to be able to pick the best possible love partner. And the 10 cherries apply perfectly regardless whether you are gay or straight or anything else. No doubt, we should all avoid unnecessary suffering. We should all avoid pain and waste of time. And we should all aim at living extraordinary lives. That's uh, my view, no matter your preferences. So yes, a clear yes for this fifth question. Now, the sixth question. Could you elaborate on the Jack Welch question, cherry? So... Uh, what's the point here? Okay, let me try to explain you. Jack Welch was for more than 22 years the CEO of the General Electric Company. He is considered probably the most successful uh, manager ever in the US or, or maybe one of the best managers globally. And his job was basically to go around the world supervising hundreds of managers that the General Electric Company had, that the General Electric Company had all over the world. And every time a manager presented him with bad results, he would listen attentively. And if he was not convinced by the manager's plan to solve things, he would simply boldly ask, tell me, tell me, if you were not in this business today, would you get in? And if the manager doubted, or if the answer was no, then Jack Welch asked, hmm, so what are you going to do about it? Which meant basically, what's your exit strategy plan? Well, I believe in love relationships, this is very similar. You know, we tend to stick inside underperforming relationships because we hope our partner will change or worse, even worse, because we tend to think that we have already invested so much in this relationship that we have already, we don't want to lose time, and so we tend to stay there. And this is very bad. In reality, this is a waste of our time and it means a lot of suffering. So you either fix it deeply or better get out. That's the point with the Jack Welch question. Now, let's move to question number seven. Rick, you make a lot of emphasis on serenity. Isn't that boring? You know, I don't want a boring relationship. Well, let me answer it. I don't think serenity has anything to do with, with being bored. You know? Actually, just the opposite. See, the point here is, you know, with serenity, which is cherry number one of the model, the point here with serenity is that your partner should provide you full, deep serenity, meaning you know you can fully trust your partner and you know his or her love is constant. You know that his or her love is consistent, regular. You don't suffer drastic ups and downs. You don't get tons of love one day and infidelity or even worse, violence the next day. Serenity means constant, consistent, regular, pacific, trustworthy love. Now, there's nothing boring about this and I'll tell you why. Once you have serenity in your relationship, you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry at all about your relationship. And, and that, you know, and, 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 and then you can move on to do most, uh, the more interesting things. You can do lots of interesting things. You can make plans. You can project yourself into the future. You can plan trips abroad. You can program events in the future. You can buy a house. You can think of kids. You know, life can be very exciting precisely because at the foundation there is serenity. That's the point. So nothing boring about serenity, just the opposite. Let's move to question number eight. Uh, I am asked, you don't mention sex in your theory. Why? Is it not an important factor? 
Well, of course, sex is an important factor. And when applying the picky picky cherry picking theory, you should always factor it uh, since the beginning. For example, you should make sure that your relationship provides you serenity also in the sexual arena. Or when determining your values, if this is the case, you should give sex the importance that it, it has for you. And of course, this will vary from person to person. But if sex is important for you, you must put it in your values uh, list. You know, like with every other thing that you care for, sex should be included in your list of exigencies. And when selecting your ideal candidate, you better make sure that you also include the dimension of sex in your selection process. Unless, unless you don't care about sex, but I, I, I tend to doubt that. So, uh, in a nutshell, yes, sex must be included throughout the application of the theory. Now, let's move to question number nine. What's the role of forgiveness in your theory? I mean, people make mistakes. Are there second chances possible? Well, of course, we all deserve second chances. Of course, we all make mistakes. Of course, we all can ask for a second chance. And it is human and generous to give your loved one a second chance if he or she has made a mistake. But, but, two things. First of all, make sure that the offender is truly sorry about what he or she did to you. Really sorry. And secondly, never give a third chance. You can give a second chance, but if you give a third chance, very soon you will be giving a fourth and a fifth and a sixth and so forth chances. So remember, it's very difficult that people change. And remember, you don't have any time to waste. So second chances, yes. Third chances, never. Finally, um, what's the role of passion in your theory? Is passion important to you? Well, that's an excellent question. Passion is quintessential to the uh, picky picky cherry picking theory is fundamental it should be passion which drives your search and your selection process it should be passion which defines what you look for in a love partner it should be passion what keeps you searching tirelessly intensively fighting against all odds until you find that great love who is out there waiting for you to discover Passion should drive you. Passion is the energy, is the fuel that should push you towards finding a great love partner and an extraordinary life. So, um, that's it, the Q&A. Make sure you understand the theory and put it to work for you. You know, this is, this is for you. This is for your own benefit. Um, if you want to better understand the theory, of course, do not hesitate. Reach out to me. I will be happy to explain you more in detail. If you have questions, uh, if you have doubts, uh, that is why I'm here. You have there my coordinates and I will be very glad to talk to you. Uh, make sure you follow me here in YouTube. You can also follow me in Instagram on the Rick Serrano Coach. And I will be very happy to see you here for the next video. Thank you very, very much. And thank you especially to all of you who contributed with the questions for the picky picky cherry picking theory. Thank you very much and big hug from Luxembourg. Take care.